All right, I think we should get started, team. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and um, welcome to this webinar. Thank you very much for taking your time to join us in today's webinar. Um, that is titled 10 Years on Building Resilience Through Risk Management in Tanzania. Before I proceed further, I would like to um, ask each one of us who, who is in the call in the webinar to make sure that you have your um, microphone muted so that we are able to have a, a clear communication. And there will be plenty of opportunity to engage where you would be um, encouraged to unmute yourself. So my name is Irene Madejem Lola. I am the Operations Director uh, at the Financial Sector De Deepening Trust, FSDT. FSDT is a market, a financial sector market development program that takes on an approach of uh, market development, systemic market development that are aimed at addressing the systemic constraints in the market and contribute towards a pro poor growth in the financial sector. The FSDT acknowledged the importance of the contribution of microinsurance as a key alternative coping mechanism for the various market segment and the financial sector in general, and the role it plays in the financial inclusion. So today's webinar, uh, the main purpose is to inform, educate, and share lessons that we've learned in the insurance journey for Tanzania. But at the same time, we'd like to reflect on the journey ahead, especially towards achieving the national target set for the country where we want to see 50% of the adult population having at least one insurance product by 2028. And we know that in order to achieve this target, definitely microinsurance is the way to go to reach uh, the many Tanzanians. So let's reflect on this journey. It's been a long time, uh, over 10 years in terms of the microinsurance journey. It started in 2011 where we saw uh, Tanzania Insurance Regulatory Authority, which is the regulator, Access to Insurance Initiative, A2I, Finmark Trust, and SEMFRI, together with FSDT in 2011, worked together to carry out uh, the very first Access to Insurance Diagnostic Survey in the country. This survey identified critical constraints that are existing in the market, both from the supply side as well as the demand side. On the demand side, it was very clear that the awareness of the insurance uh, was very poor in, in Tanzania. And this was mainly due to poor perception and limited uh, demand for the insurance uh, solutions. On the supply side, there was limited distribution channels. Um, very few products existed in the market that are addressing the real needs of the population. And in terms of the capacity of the insurers, that was also a huge constraint where there was limited skilled personnel, both uh, sides, whether it's from the, um, the policy makers, as well as the regulators, as well as the insurance services providers. So this really, um, you know, the, the rallying up of the information, which was coupled with a FinScope Tanzania, which was carried, it was conducted in 2013, came to realize that in Tanzania at that time, only 13% of Tanzanians were enjoying one form of insurance or another, which was extremely very low at that time. So the realization of these constraints and the market condition when it comes to the insurance product really orchestrated the, um, the coordination effort in the market, which saw a private-public pub uh, partnership uh, in, 19, uh, in 2014 into a formulation of what we call microinsurance steering committee in the country, as well as microinsurance technical working group, which together they worked towards development of the very first microinsurance strategy for Tanzania. And this is a strategy that was supposed to cover the period between 2014 to 2016. This strategy, together with its action plan, which was uh, later developed in 2015, anchored a key 
um, strategic intervention that FSDT took on itself to facilitate and support uh, the deployment of the same together with the rest of the stakeholders in the market. So in 2015, FSDT really um, started supporting the stakeholders in the market towards the implementation of the action plan that was developed. And the very first implementation was really to look for uh, a coordinator who will come and actually be able to support and coordinate the implementation of the various activities under the National Microinsurance Action Plan, shortly known as NMA. Uh, uh, the practitioner who are here and who have been in the market for uh, some time would remember names such as Richard Santongo, who was the first one of his consultants that was hired to come and support the market. And later on, we have our very own Anselmi Mushi, who took on over from uh, Richard Santongo to really provide this critical support and technical assistance to the market. But at the same time, we had uh, Mr. Lemi Manje, who was a consultant that we hired and has worked extensively in this market to support the players towards the development of the microinsurance. So in this National Microinsurance Action Plan, some of the other interventions that were supported, and here I'm just going to mention a few because they are quite vast. But I would just like to call out really the development, training, and rollout of the performance indicators, microinsurance performance indicators, which today as we sit, they are with the regulator and they are using them to actually be able to guide progress of microinsurance in, in, in the country. But most importantly, really the development, what we call microinsurance landscape survey, which up to now two surveys, these are supply side survey have been conducted. The first one was in 2016 and the second one uh, in 2021. I would also like to call out a really big um, facility that we really facilitated in the market innovation challenge fund, which was dubbed BIMA challenge fund. And the one that actually we have the um, focus note and we encourage all of you to actually read it. This has been a really key um, catalyst towards the um, development of a solution around the microinsurance. It was quite successful. We saw 32 companies, um, you know, applying to actually participate in the microinsurance uh, challenge fund. And we had eventually five winners and out of those five winners, three solutions were actually launched and implemented. And as we speak, these are products that are actually existing in the market. I would also like to call out uh, an initiative, an intervention, which was aimed at um, uh, demonstrating the viability of uh, venturing into microinsurance at the grassroots level. These were like the development of the regional business cases where um, the team went into the various regions and trying to actually prove the viability of microinsurance in various areas by calling out uh, different um, practitioners and service providers. I would also like to call out um, a very critical component that was aimed at develop, um, looking at the capacity building where together uh, with the Institute of Finance Management and the IIT, FSDT with a lot of technical assistance from the various consultants that we had, developed a course, a fundamental course that is aimed at um, developing um, of in-country trainers that have been fully trained as train of trainers and they are ready and fully satisfied as we speak. We have nine certified uh, microinsurance practitioners who are really a resource in the market to train others uh, practitioners and be able to uh, develop further the microinsurance. And this training as we speak is fully owned by IFM and IIT and further courses will actually continue to be run by, this, uh, by, by IFM. We also saw the country uh, enacting bank assurance regulation in 2019, which is also part of those action plan that we are actually formulated and which is really a key, a key success. And we are proud ourselves with that. And eventually where we sit today, we are seeing um, that Mike in the Tanzania financial sector development master plan, which has been launched uh, 2020 covering the year 
up to 2030. We are seeing an insurance is a key component in this master plan and the target and the action plan that is a continuation of this strategy, which is under the National Microinsurance Action Plan, being carried forward as a key agenda in the development of the financial sector in Tanzania. This indeed has been a very exciting journey and it seemed almost impossible, but FSDT, at FSDT we believe in the potential of the market and the need to drive change and sustainability. As we forge ahead, we put our trust in you, the insurance practitioners, in the insurance industry and stakeholders, and in particular, the microinsurance practitioners. This is because you are an important piece of the puzzle when looking at the insurance industry in a holistic fashion and how real growth can become a reality. To the entire panel and our online audience, we invite you to actively participate in this forum uh, as we reflect on the journey as well as think forward uh, the actions that we need to take towards uh, further development and ensuring that the Tanzanians are having access to insurance. We look for the active participation to just engagement uh, mechanisms that will actually be uh, guided in this uh, forum today. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our communication specialist, Victor Kiando, who will actually uh, take us through the first engagement uh, before we formally start with the panel. Thank you very much. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much, Irene, for such an insightful um, opening remarks. And um, as she mentioned, um, I'll be taking you through a live poll that we have um, organized for you guys. And uh, we understand now it's, um, it's, you know, this is happening after lunch. So we need to get you more active and engaged so that you are well prepared for the panel that's about to come after this. So we have prepared a live poll for you. We have two questions for you. And um, let me share my screen. And if I could have maybe one person text in the text box, the chat box, if they can see my screen. Uh, one second. I don't know if everybody can see my screen. Yes. All uh, right. Can you see a question there? Yes, can see. All right. Um, so I'll walk you through exactly how to access and participate in this um, in this poll. Um, I'll need you to go to www.menti.com. I can put this in the chat box as well. Give me a few seconds. Uh, let me put this in the chat box as well, so it's easier for everyone. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Can everybody see the website and the, the code? in the chat box. And uh, for, for this poll, I we recommend that you use your, your phone. Um, it, it works best for you to participate through your phone. And so that way you can be able to see the live engagement on, on your laptop. So um, once you go to menti.com, they'll ask you for the, uh, for the code, which is 2013-8850. Then you click Submit. Then after that, you should be able to see the question and the answer options. So I'll give everybody um, exactly 30 seconds, and I can read out the question too, um, but I'll give everybody 30 seconds to answer. And uh, from the Microsoft Teams uh, screen, we'll be able to see the actual poll um, depending on where you answer. So I, there we have someone already answering. There we go. So the question is, what insurance product must be prioritized by insurance service providers? Health insurance, the options are health insurance, life insurance, agriculture insurance, accident insurance, motor insurance, and fire insurance. So you have exactly 30 seconds. Oh, great. Thank 
Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for those who participated. So this is the first question, and here we see the winner is health insurance. So I hope all the insurance service providers who are who are attending this webinar, I hope they're taking notes. <laughs> all right, so thank you very much. Now we'll go to the next question. And our next question says, uh, what should the, uh, should, the, should the industry and financial sector stakeholders focus on in order to drive microinsurance penetration? And um, in the options, we have policy reforms. We have yeah. development of new innovative products. Yeah. We have uh, distribution channels. We have business case for microinsurance. And then we have uh, use, use of national identification. Again, um, I would like to ask uh, for, for the mic to be muted if you're not speaking. Thank you. Victor, please bring the um, the screen. Oh, it's not visible. Let me see here. Let me bring it back again so we're able to see. And we is have a hand now? from It is. And there is a hand from Lillian. All right. Welcome, Lillian. No, sorry. I, I didn't intend to do that. Apologies. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think uh, 30 seconds are up. And so this, uh, these are the results. And uh, we see we have a winner here, development of new innovative products. Um, I think this is very useful information for the, for the industry and uh, the people have spoken. So, um, and that's it from my side. Over to you, Irene. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so here we already have something that we can work on and actually be able to um, to address the market, brilliant. So health insurance, but we still need innovative um, uh, solutions, but we also need to look at the distribution channels because I saw that one is also coming up very strongly. So thank you very much, uh, Victor, for that very quick and energizing um, exercise. So without further ado, at this juncture, I would like to welcome and introduce the webinar moderator, uh, Madam Margaret Ikongo. Margaret is a seasoned insurance professional with close to 40 years experience in Tanzania insurance industry. She has serviced in uh, service in various capacity at the National Insurance Corporation Tanzania, Tanzania Insurance Regulatory Authority, and currently at Alders Insurance Brokers and Consultants. Margaret also has numerous experience and qualifications in terms of her professional qualification. Uh, Miss Congo is a holder of advanced certificate from a chartered insurance industry and grad IRM. Her education is vast covering enterprise risk management, uh, managerial control, MIS, masters in business administration, uh, and she is currently in various boards in Tanzania, National Micro uh, Insurance Bank and MB Bank, AAR, which is now known as, I'm trying to remember the name, apologies for that, uh, Vodacom uh, Continental Re uh, in Kenya, uh, and Acturia and Risk Consulting Limited. As you can see, Margaret, and we all know her, uh, she's definitely a well-seasoned, um, you know, insurance practitioner, and she is the right person to come and actually be able to drive uh, this discussion that we are reflecting on the last 10 years, because she's been very much at the heart of these development. On this note, I would like to welcome Margaret. Margaret Karibu. Thank you, Irene. Thank you very much for those uh, kind remarks, and especially you are key opening uh, remarks where you basically took us through all the 10 years journey and uh, through you i guess on behalf of the industry to thank fsdt for a great role they've played in the microinsurance space in tanzania 
So without uh, wasting a lot of time, uh, we have a number of panelists. I uh, would uh, first ask them to introduce themselves, very briefly their name, organization, and their current role, previous or current, as far as uh, micro insurance Hello. is concerned. Yes. I will start with uh, Joyce Kemibaro. Uh, I'm, I'm a first name person, so please uh, bear with me. I'll start with Joyce. Briefly, your name, organization, and your role in the micro insurance space. Introduction, can I be heard? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm still on mute. I've unmuted. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Margaret, fellow panelists, and also uh, the audience. My name is Kimibaro Muteku, and uh, currently I am the head of insurance at FSDT and project uh, manager for the National Microinsurance Action Plan project that has been discussed here. So in terms of roles, yes, I am very passionate about insurance, uh, particularly microinsurance, uh, this being my second uh, role in terms of driving the market, but also seeing how we can touch on different segments, um, women, youth, uh, farmers, uh, business people in particular, yes. Um, so that's an overview. Um, having had uh, an outlook and experience within the bank assurance, general insurance, um, micro insurance and health insurance um, in this market for a period of about 20 years now. Thank you, Joy. Uh, we will hear from Hamis, Hamis Suleiman. Briefly introduce yourself. Um, Hamis Suleiman, CEO of Salam General and uh, Chairman of uh, Association of uh, Tanzania Insurers, ATI, and Chair of uh, Tanzania Working Group for Micro Insurer. Thanks. Thank you. Hilad Maskini. Thank you, Madam. I'm Hilal Paskini, working with, with Tanzania Insurance Regulatory Authority as a manager licensing and market conduct supervision. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Lillian. Lillian Macau. Um, hi, my name is Lillian McCoy. I am co-founder of Jami Africa, an insure tech that is targeting the mass population in Tanzania. Thank you, Lillian. Angelica, Pesha. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Angelica Pesha. I'm the Chief Officer for uh, Tigo Pesa. And uh, here I'm uh, representing Mobile Financial Services, who are partnering very massively to um, enhance insurance and increase distribution in the market. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angelica, and then Dr. Sakwari. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my afternoon. name is Dr. Sakwari. Uh, I was uh, in this industry for the last 20 years, working as a lecturer at the Institute of Finance Management. Later, I joined the regulatory authority as a commissioner of insurance. Currently working at uh, Tanzania Institute of Accountants as a lecturer, but also a co-founder of the um, Africa College of Insurance and Social Protection, where I work as an um, executive chairperson. We do uh, professional training uh, to, in, to increase capacity in, uh, in, in African continent related to insurance and social protection. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you can see that our panelists are seasoned and they are all passionate about uh, micro insurance. So it's going to be a very useful and a gainful engagement. Uh, just before we start, a few housekeeping announcements. Uh, if you are not speaking, please ensure that your microphone stays muted. And also, if you are not speaking, you're not a, a panelist, uh, also switch off your video. These two are to ensure that we have a quality, uh, we can edible and, uh, you, you know, we can uh, follow the, the discussion. And for comments and questions, use the chat box. I will read them out. 
uh, the mode of operation is that uh, we will have our panelists first uh, presenting. I'll ask them a few questions. They will present using about uh, less than 10 minutes if they can. And then towards the end, we'll have a QA. and a And then they'll come back to wrap up and then we will close the session. So we start with uh, Joy. Joy, I know you have been at the rim of the journey. The journey we are talking about today, the 10 years microinsurance journey in Tanzania. So if you can share with us, give us your views about the journey, about the National Microinsurance Action Plan, the challenges, the constraints, the gaps, what, is, what needs to be done. You can also tell us about the BIMA Challenge Fund, and if there is any near future, you know, felicitation from uh, FSDT. So, Joy, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Um, it's a lot to say in, 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 uh, in 10 minutes, but I'll do the best that I can. Um, it's been an exciting journey, and uh, so that I don't repeat too much of, of what uh, Irene had said at the intro, um, as FFCT, we normally look at where the challenges lie in the market, where the constraints on the demand side being the customer side and on the supply side. So obviously we noticed with all the other financial services offered in this market, uh, being banking, uh, looking at uh, the stock market, um, and other and microfinance, we noticed through the, the studies done that there was obviously a gap in the insurance space with 13% in 2013 moving to 15% in 2017. So there was a need to also elevate the microinsurance and stroke insurance uh, profile. So we looked at where the gaps are on the customer side and supply side and the action plan tied in with what uh, partnerships were in place with the microinsurance uh, technical working group uh, and also working with the regulator, come up with interventions that help address these gaps. And what was most important is that this is not something that was done alone uh, by FACT, but it was a market effort, market initiative. So you get different players coming in, but most importantly, there was the need to, to get the market to a certain level whereby uh, education is provided in terms of what is microinsurance, what does it involve, how do you get in, into involved into that. That's where the technical experts were able to come in and provide the market with the know-how, and that was done through stakeholder engagements, through industry forums, getting people to understand what microinsurance is all about. But also, uh, Margaret, looking at the business case, because insurance uh, organizations, especially at the board level, need to understand that there is an opportunity within the microinsurance space. And what does that look like for Tanzania? Um, and at that time, when the first diagnostic study was done, we saw that there was a lot of potential, about um, 18 million worth of the population would be eligible to sign up for insurance, and especially microinsurance. Looking at those who've not been able to take this, but have a need, but understanding that this is an alternative risk coping mechanism, that exists in this market that is there to address the needs um, of the population. And of course, the thing that came out quite strongly in most of the studies, as we've seen in the poll that we conducted, was health. So health was always very, very uh, key in terms of how this was addressed. So capacity building was done uh, to be able to get the market to understand it there after the business case has mentioned. And that's when we started seeing insurers and also other stakeholders being eager to develop but not just developing products, but looking at the human-centered design, that was also quite key. So how are you developing products that actually read into the needs of the customer and not looking at products that were being developed in the boardroom uh, that you know, you'd know roll out and you'd find that the customer is not taking those. So that was quite key. And then how does innovation come in? So looking at the policy space, are they, were there any constraints that were preventing the industry players from rolling out? And how can we be able to leverage on that, but also be able to allow the players? And at that point, once the market was mature enough, we were able to say, OK, we're able to have an innovation challenge fund. And this is because the market understood what was involved and we're ready now, having understood the business case to contribute and core share in terms of the investments, whether it was uh, um, market facilitation in terms of, uh, of financial support or technical or capacity building in whichever area uh, solution products. So the challenge fund was quite easy in terms of being able to allow the market players. 
Thank you for that. To allow the market players um, to form partnerships. So what we saw a lot of, Margaret, was partnerships in terms of the applications. You would get a developer, a stroke, uh, an insure tech, so a technology firm that's focusing on insurance, partnering with an insurance company uh, that would then be able to undertake and underwrite the risk. Uh, alongside that, you would get, in some cases, uh, innovative piece where technology could come in uh, in terms of working with mobile network operators or other forms of innovation. And you'd see those partnerships coming in place in terms of memorandums of understanding. So you've got to see the dynamics in terms of all these partners coming together to be able to, to roll out the products. And from that, it was very responsive because uh, this was the first of its kind in this market and in East Africa uh, when we did roll out the BIMA challenge in 2016. Uh, and we were, you know, we were unsure because you do this, but you're not sure what the response will be like. So having 32 applications was was a coup and it was very encouraging. And we looked at it differently. And, and you know, as we touch on the focus note, we looked at it as an engagement challenge fund because we were able to communicate with the players, uh, look at the applications, but also come back to them in terms of helping them to improve. Um, their proposal so that it's something that really works for the market and, and based on the different parameters, uh, be able to ensure some form of success. And we we're looking at a, a learning, a lessons learned approach. Uh, something definitely would work, but also allowing it to work because we know that there's an investment by the different stakeholders to be able to come in, uh, look at the idea, sharpen it as much as they can and be able to roll out. So that was quite exciting and to know that the three um, winners who were able to roll out um, have been able to have their products going on until now, and they've been able to touch different lives and different segments of the market. So there's so much more. And, you know, some of the highlights that come to play um, include the, the training of trainers, because we have nine trainers in this market now um, who are able to offer capacity building in-house. Previous to that, we would have to have experts from different markets coming in um, to, to train uh, the supply side, the industry players. But now the trainers are here and not just in training, they are also able to offer technical support to the industry. And these trainers are practitioners in the market. So they, this is what they do. Uh, these are their day-to-day -day jobs. So they actually understand things better in terms of being able to offer that. But looking at all the strategies that we've had, the 2014 and 2017 until now, We've seen the market mature to a point where there are levels of sustainability uh, in terms of the trainers, in terms of the landscape, which we know eventually will, will, will go to the regulator who will be able to handle that with other key stakeholders who are willing to participate. And most importantly is the coordinator and the technical assistance, because there's a willingness and eagerness and able to look at the level of affordability for the market to say, we understand what this is now. We understand there's a need and we're ready to, to invest to be able to benefit as a long-term solution. So, so the business case and the opportunity is something we've been very happy to see and to see that sustainability is happening because in the work that we do as market facilitators, it's important to see that. So that, that's the next stage, uh, Margaret, whereby we see that the market is maturing and where they were imperfections previously, we're seeing a tilt and moving towards a, a level whereby things are able to continue because the systems have been set in place, the buy-in is there, partnerships are there, and there are individuals or institutions who are taking ownership moving forward. So yes, maybe I've made it sound very smooth, but definitely the key lesson uh, that, has, that has come through all through is, is stakeholder engagement. Always important uh, based on the experiences we've had to have partners close, but also to keep them informed and engaged whenever things are happening or when their ideas or when their opportunities to, to make a difference and getting them to understand deeper. In fact, one of the key revelations that the industry was able to touch on was the uh, regional business cases where many of the insurers who had never been out into different uh, remote areas of the country were able to go out and actually speak to prospective um, prospective policy holders, uh, the farmers and, and other rural dwellers to be able to understand what is possible. Um, can this work? What are the needs of this audience? And also it is a way of validating what they knew or had seen from research, which has been able to inform quite a bit 
in terms of the work we do. So yes, so the next stage is the market being as mature as it, as it can be and being able to sustain itself and keep going and the microinsurance business case continuing and obviously contributing um, to the goal that we have as a country, which is now linked to the financial sector development master plan to 2030. Thank, Thank you, you Kim. Brett. Thank you very much. I will keep uh, towards the end. Thank you very much for that insight of the journey. Uh, we'll now talk to the regulator represented by Hirad Maskil. Uh, we know that regulation is key for consumer protection, but I was wondering myself, is it a necessary evil? Yeah, okay. So Hirad, please share with us uh, what are the key roles uh, the regulator should play in driving the financial sector development master plan, you know, which include micro insurance, and also share with us lessons learned on what has happened so far, and maybe how we could have done it better in terms of regulation. And if you will touch briefly on the bank assurance, I know it has not been around for quite some time, but uh, what are the initial impact as far as uh, reaching the the low income uh, people using it as a distribution channel. I'll ask you another question later. Start with that, uh, Hilad. Thank you, Madam Nikongo. Yeah, me as a regulator, we have uh, enacted the uh, microinsurance regulation on 2013. But uh, yet, uh, up to now, we have registered uh, only two microinsurance uh, players, of which we have one uh, agent called uh, ECA, and another one is uh, as a broker in the name of uh, microinsurer, who even, uh, as of now, he decided even to exit the market due to the issues of maybe, uh, I think, his uh, compliance on the issue of uh, shareholding, the requirement which requires all the brokers to have uh, at least uh, two thirds of shares, two thirds, two thirds of uh, shareholding. But uh, actually, uh, as a regulator, the growth of uh, of uh, micro insurance uh, in Tanzania is not that much impressing because of uh, maybe, like, as it has been said by other colleagues, that uh, awareness is not that, that much. There uh, is a limited distribution channel, as I, I mentioned before. But uh, what I can even uh, maybe advise uh, maybe insurance companies in this market is just to come up with the innovative products, whereby you can target uh, those uh, low-income earners by designing uh, uh, micro insurance products. And uh, us as a regulator, what we do is just to fast track if there is any uh, application to, to register a micro insurance product. That's uh, what I can say, Madam. Okay, can you say briefly about bank assurance? Uh, yes, bank assurance seen... currently, we have managed to register 16 uh, uh, insurance companies. And uh, as, uh, as, as, as if now, we know most of the uh, insurance, uh, most of the events, they have a big network in a different uh, peripheral in uh, Tanzania. Tanzania, so what we expect maybe through bank assurance, the uh, micro insurance products can can be can be innovated and penetrate penetrate them to the uh, to the uh, urban areas. So uh, what I, 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 I maybe I can advise uh, insurers in the market is just to use the 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 distribution channels of the bank assurance. Another question for you, Hilland, on the regulatory yes. space. Yeah. Uh, we we recently even the test talk spoke about uh, innovation. Sorry, I cannot hear. You. Sorry. I'm say, key to key to micro insurance is innovation, and the yeah. use of technology. 
So from a regulatory space, uh, I, I, I want to, to, to learn from you because uh, in Tanzania, literally, there are three regulators. If you want to use the, the, the telecoms, they are regulated by TSRA. Yeah. And and the money, the M-Pesas and the Tigo Pesas are regulated by the BOT. And the insurance is regulated by TIRA. So in terms of uh, agility and speed to, de to decision from the regulatory point of view, I want to hear from you. Is there a platform where the three of you meet and actually take common decisions? Yes, madam. Currently, we have, uh, Tira and the TCRA they have entered into, memo into a memorandum of understanding on how to deal with the products which, which are cut across uh, the insurance sector and the communication sector. And normally, uh, Tira has a very close, uh, close uh, collaboration with the BOT. In case there is any issue which cut across these three regulators, it will be easy for a regulator to communicate to each other and come up with a solution. But uh, uh, what we expect maybe is just to like to come up with the regulations or an agreement on how to deal with uh, those products which uh, may, be, may, 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 may be innovated and needs to be uh, regulated by all three regulators uh, at the moment. OK, thank you, Hira. The, uh, another question to you. Um, yeah. Where do you see the financial inclusion as far as insurance is concerned? In the Sorry, I'm, I'm saying, yeah. uh, where do you see the financial inclusion with specific uh, reference to insurance? In the year 2028, Irene told us that uh, the target is to have at 50 percent of the adult uh, population with at least one insurance product. Where do you see that in the year 2028? Yeah, through 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 uh, micro insurance products, if really the uh, the stakeholders like insurers or brokers embark into innovating uh, more products i think will 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 we 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 can have, we can achieve what we, we expect to have uh, 50 percent others to included in uh, to have at least one product in insurance also having um, a bank assurance in place because we have just started to, uh, to to register them last year we expect through them uh, and currently, we have been receiving uh, a lot of uh, micro insurance products for approval. And then we are fast tracking all the products so that at least our targets for 2028 will be achieved accordingly. Thank you very much, uh, Hilad. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I will now uh, ask uh, Hamis, the chairman of the Association of Tanzanian Insurers and also the technical working group uh, to tell us briefly about the journey, very briefly from the market players side, the challenges. And uh, Hamis, can you share with us, do insurers have a risk appetite, an adequate risk appetite, appetite for microinsurance to be in, the, in their portfolio? I'll ask another Thanks. question later. All right, thanks, uh, Mama Mzei Congo. I would say yes, insurers have a uh, risk appetite on micro insurance products, but uh, as you know, micro insurance product are subject of uh, volumes. If you can have, have volumes, you can make money. If you don't have volumes, no matter how the product good is, you cannot get money out of, out of it. At one particular time, regulator 
was talking to insurance companies to have a minimum premium out of their GWP gross return premium coming from micro insurance product. But it was like uh, a sort of uh, uh, chicken and uh, egg. You will need a regulator to approve the micro insurance products, which goes to him uh, uh, for approval. It was not happening uh, in 2020, in 2018, 19, and at least in 2020, uh, the second uh, quarter of 2020, we've started seeing uh, approval uh, for some of the products from the uh, regulators. But before that, it was uh, very difficult. According to insurance companies, what they are saying is it takes about five years to break even uh, if you have any, any insurance products. And uh, from my own experience, what I'm saying is if you have proper uh, distribution channel, uh, if you have proper uh, collaboration between insurance companies and uh, the likes of the banks and uh, MNOs, then it is easier and uh, you can crank and uh, uh, get the break even point and start making profit uh, without waiting for, uh, for, for two or three years. You can break even in the first year if you get the, the, the volume. So enthusiasm is there for the insurance companies to, uh, to sell uh, insurance products, but there are numbers of issues which need to be sorted out before every insurer uh, he can uh, come in and start uh, selling and uh, innovating uh, micro insurance micro insurance products. Uh, Sham Hamis, maybe you can also thank you. I've heard you about that. Can you also briefly tell us uh, because we uh, we also introduced you as a chairperson of the technical working group. Uh, what is the role of the group? Wasn't it supposed to address some of the challenges you are bringing up? Closing the gates on the approval with the regulator, making uh, you know insurers understand that it is a business case. What has the technical working group uh, achieved so far? Thank you, Mrs. Ikongo. Uh, no, our, we'll start with Mze. Mze start Mama, with Mze. Mze Mama Ikongo. Yeah. Mze Mama, Mama, Mama Ikongo. The main role of the technical working group is to motivate the supplier of uh, micro insurance product because if you don't have a, a supplier, then you don't have a, a, a micro insurance micro insurance product. So, so through FSDT, uh, we do organize uh, uh, workshops and uh, training to uh, various uh, insurance players, and uh, I think uh, each of the insurance company must have attended the micro insurance uh, product uh, uh, training. Not only that, uh, we have to organize uh, conferences. We, we, we have one, an international micro insurance conference uh, in, at Zanzibar, where we have about uh, more than 600 participants just to get insight of the micro insurance product where we can win and uh, we to share experience from uh, other markets. Uh, in the past, uh, we as ATI and TWG, we have organized for some of the candidates within from the regulatory uh, authority and uh, within the player to go outside TZ to attend uh, the international conferences. And I think uh, uh, ex-commissioner, uh, Dr. Sakware was one of the uh, beneficiary through uh, TWP uh, G programs. Thank you very much. Uh, when uh, the regulator was presenting, 
He spoke about uh, the micro insurance regulation. And of course, within that regulation, there's an issue of a distribution channel. And uh, he said that only two agents have uh, actually registered themselves under that uh, regulation. Uh, I want to talk about distribution, distribution channel. Uh, if you can link that with what we have now, the telecoms, I know uh, Angelica is here, she will speak later, as well as the bank assurance. Uh, can we say that uh, the issue of distribution channel of um, microinsurance is now a history that we have the right channels? or uh, Because you are an insurer, you need a, a distribution channel, which will, of course, cut your cost because, as you said, you want to do microinsurance, but with least cost. Can you say briefly about that? Thanks, the Mama Ikongo. I'll mix here between the distribution channel and uh, product innovation. The two registered micro insurance participants, the micro insurer, and uh, I think we've got uh, Milvik is a broker, but uh, uh, is also uh, one of the innovator. What we expect from the distribution channel, especially uh, banks and uh, uh, MNOs and the likes of Yami, uh, uh, something uh, from Lillian, to come up with a product to innovate and come up with the, the product. And this is what uh, Micro Ensure and Milvik they've been doing. They are coming with the product, they are sending it to insurers, and insurers are giving them the, the platform uh, to go and uh, sell their own product. Of course, since they are the innovators, they are taking uh, a bit of uh, a more commission than uh, a normal uh, broker or back insurance channel will, uh, will have uh, obtained. Uh, if Milvik they are here in the micro insurer, they will tell you how much of the of the commission they were taking because of the of providing the uh, platform and uh, their own their own product. So that is uh, lacking. Having insurance uh, distribution channels. Forgive me, I will use uh, uh, bad words like the parasite only selling uh, products which uh, is coming from uh, uh, the insurance channel, it's, it's the insurance uh, companies themselves, it will not help, uh, help much. But if you have uh, a platform, you have numbers which you want to sell your product, it becomes more, more easier. Insurance companies does not have um, a good platform and uh, ready-made clients. It is the MNOs and the banks who have the uh, individual policyholders where we can sell the product. So we expect uh, banks and uh, MNOs to come with innovative uh, product to enable us to sell. As you have seen from the poll, what are the most uh, basic items which will assist in selling the microinsurance products? One was innovation, which uh, I think uh, topped by having a 47%, and another item was a uh, distribution channel with uh, 21%. So these two items must work uh, hand in hand if you want to get the results. We as insurers, we are providing our, we are renting our capital to the distribution channels to enable them uh, sell. That is my take. Thank you. The last one for you. Uh, what support does the market require to achieve the set target? I'm, I'm, I'm at the 2028 target. Can you, if you can think of any, because we have uh, stakeholders here, we have SDT, maybe they can hear the support which the market requires. Okay, the, inclusion, yeah. thank you. The first one, I'm fond of uh, uh, micro, Microinsurance, and I think I'm one of the 
uh, underwriters who are receiving, who is receiving uh, many proposals than any other one in the in the in the market. There are locals who want to establish a standalone micro insurance companies, and yes, we can establish uh, standalone micro insurance companies uh like uh, what we have i think uh, in uh, uh rwanda uh, but uh, i don't think and uh, since regulators here uh <clears throat> we have that in our uh, insurance insurance act so uh, first is to make registration of uh, uh micro insurance company standalone insurance company uh, quite easier and uh, you, co you, 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 you concentrate only on micro insurance products. That's, that's one. Uh, secondly, every new business, we want to have uh, some sort of a tax uh, relief or benefits. For example, uh, if you introduce a non-life micro insurance product, you will be charged that like any other insurance insurance product and if you have a hybrid of product which has life and uh, non-life you will have to pay uh, uh, that if you include your uh, portion of rider into life product the entire product becomes vertible and there is an incentive because your pro product now becomes a little bit uh, expensive compared to 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 other product so and if you can get even a tax uh, relief for a few years maybe two to three years where you will not be making uh, money out of what uh, you 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 will be selling then it will be that will be will be will be a bonus so on the registration uh uh fair uh, capital for a standalone uh, micro insurance insurance products and on the regulatory side is timeline for approval of uh, insurance insurance product you don't have to send a micro insurance product for approval and it takes ages to be approved so if we can do those small small bits then it will um, uh, it will be like a, 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 a catalyst. It stimulate uh, new insurance companies to come in to sell the uh, insurance, insurance, uh, micro insurance products. And uh, if you uh, offer some sort of uh, rebate or tax relief, then it will be, make our uh, price uh, a little bit uh, cheaper for everyone to to afford buying the buying the products. Thank you very much, uh, Hamis. I uh, will now uh, move to Dr. Sakwale. I'm privileged to know that uh, your PhD was on microinsurance. So I'm <laughs> using that privilege <laughs> to ask you, uh, Doctor, is the concept of microinsurance clear? Uh, do people understand when we talk about inclusive uh, microinsurance market? Thank you very much, Madam Ze Mamai Congo. I have um, two things to share before I go to answer your question. Just for the benefit of uh, participants of this webinar, that I was also a member of Tanzania Work. Uh, working group of microinsurance for many years before joining the regulatory authority. And therefore, I have privileged also to, to see how people struggled and, uh, you know, develop products here in Tanzania, but also through what you have just said, uh, through my study, uh, I also see how things are being done in, in, in other parts of the, of the world. Uh, you see, there are three things which I, 
I think I will advise uh, as far as my insurance is concerned. The concept is understood, Madam uh, Facilitator. The concept is understood, is clear, but uh, as chairman of the RTS said, you, you need masters, you need, uh, you need the value as a business community to, to, to engage. How do we get there? Then these three things I, I think are very important. One is to is to see the, the regulatory part of it. In most of the studies which we have seen in, in various countries, I can mention of, of India, Brazil, and, and, and uh, parts of, of, of Africa, maybe countries like Kenya and, and Botswana, you can see that there is a, a certain bonus or privilege or incentive when you engage in a, in, 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 in a, in a micro insurance space. So we have to define as a market what incentive and how long does it that incentive will go. And we're talking of the incentive related to tax, incentive related to the regulation requirement, incentive related to the capital support. Those, those are very important. The second issue in this, uh, in this journey which we have to address is about knowledge. Uh, uh, you see, we are talking here in, this, in, this, in, in Tanzania, how far we have gone, there are positive, but also there are negatives. Uh, you, 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 what we are missing is that in order to have micro insurance properly understood, you get to have many, many people in the in in the in the community selling insurance. So to me, I would say we didn't allow as many people as possible to sell insurance. We are still talking of uh, a requirement of a person to have an agent's company registered by Brella to sell an insurance product in a rural place in Sumbawanga. It will take ages for a, uh, to, to, for a person in Sumbawanga to hear an insurance issue, not even to buy. So uh, it is my, my proposition that let us find a solution of, of increasing the number of people who can sell insurance. So we are talking of uh, allowing as many, making easy for an insurance to be sold by many people. I am coming from the academic space as well. We have a graduate of minimum of, of uh, 2,000 per year who have done COPs, certificate in insurance, degree in insurance. In total, you're talking of 2,000 graduates per year. Allow all these to sell insurance without making any barriers to, to the requirement of being an agent and so forth. There are mechanisms which we can, we can exhaust in the market to, to, to allow that. The third thing, Madam Chair, for me is that there is a need for capital. Uh, I, I, am, I am convinced that our insurance companies has not set aside a fund to invest in micro insurance. They are very happy with what uh, the market share with they, they, they are getting from the brokers. And uh, if we don't get a serious investment in that part, and if you look what Brazil has done, the type of investment has been put forward, you, you, you can simply say we haven't invested in, in that. And the, the last but not least in, 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 in this journey, I think we, 
we also need to support uh, our research and development activities in, in our institutions, uh, higher learning institutions like uh, Institute of Finance Management, Africa College uh, and the likes to, to come up, to team up with the insurers and see how which product will, will actually attract masses. And without research and proper research, um, action-based research, you can come with a board-based research, a board-based products, which will last for one year and then you quit. So if you have a properly researched the product, put in the market, test it, you know, sustain for many years. And in this case, we're asking also supporters like FSDT to, to, to see how we can do research with them. In a nutshell, uh, Madam, yeah, Madam Chair, the, 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 there is there is a, a, a positive, there is a movement, but we are, getting, we are going very slow. There are things which we can push faster uh, and get into a micro insurance space or development faster if we talk issues related to investment awareness and allowing many people to sell insurance. And in that way, we can see uh, the mass which our chairman of the association is talking about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, it is uh, now nice, good to hear from uh, people, the players, those who are on the ground actually selling the microinsurance product, developing them, innovating them. So we will, uh, I will invite uh, Lillian and Agnes uh, one at a time, of course, to share with us their microinsurance journey gaps, success, challenges, opportunities, you know, both in terms of uh, resources, capital, uh, human capital as well as financial capital, marketing, uh, all those processes, just to share with us the journey so that we get to understand. I'll start with uh, Lillian. Just share as you money for the journey. Um, thank you, Mama Mze Margaret. So we, our product is uh, uh, specifically on health insurance, and we were targeting specifically the bottom of the pyramid population. And at the time that we got engaged with with FSDT, we were at 800, you know, users, and their engagement got us to about 15,000 in um, impact. But uh, I would say what worked is. Um, Telcos. Telcos were very ready and welcoming to partner, distribution partnerships, and um, organizations, development organizations like FSDT, uh, GSMA, and the likes. They were on, they are also very um, supportive, providing technical support to financial support. Um, what else? Uh, the human centered design. I would say uh, again, it's also. Uh, a feature that you might think you don't need, but once you use it, you see great value. So even for us, when we started out uh, with a different product name, uh, I think we were called Bima Afia at the time, we had different branding and different um, product packages, but working, uh, you know, applying the human centric design got us to changing everything from product name to brand, brand uh, colors to um, the products that we had. So I'd say these are the things that worked really well. I'd, I'd also speak of, of the customer. The customers, uh, in as much as there is lack of awareness, but once they get to know about the product, they are you know ready to take the product. They're like, we needed this product yesterday. But the challenges or I'd say areas that need improvement would be obviously, uh, again, as, as said by previous speakers, is um, insurers, the risk appetite. Because again, our business model starting out was uh, we provide the platform technology, the insurer does underwriting, the telco covers distribution. But the partnership uh, became challenging because of insurers' uh, willingness or risk appetite to, to, to the product. The, you know, Vodacom is ready to sell, push the product as much as the customer needs. And so long as the product is designed to be attractive for the users, but the insurer is, uh, again, I would 
okay, I don't know how to put this, but it's more of technical support to insurers so that they are able to underwrite products for their micro market. So they have vast knowledge and, and experience underwriting products, but when it comes to micro insurance, they are not confident with their prices. So for us, uh, even in the partnership, it's more of, okay, so insurer give us a risk premium that you need to underwrite or to cover person X from uh, you know, mass population. And just, you know, for us, we, we, we thought, or, or you'd think it's a simple question and a team of actuarials would sit together and come with a product, but that in itself uh, is a task for the insurers. And um, for them, they would call for more pilots, like many pilots, which brings us to the second problem of mismatch between partners. So you have a telco who is keen to sell a product. So they'll say like, okay, we are ready to do one pilot, but you don't wanna be doing two, three pilots over and over. The insurer, because they are unsure of the pricing, they would want various or multiple uh, pilots. So the flexibility to change prices, depending on how the market is responding. So all that, the, you know, they, Insurer is about testing and, and uh, getting to uh, fixing the metrics of, of micro insurance or the underwriting, while the telco is more of profit and uh, getting the customers to trust their brand. So with the telcos, their worry would be, I don't want to be telling my customer today I'm selling this insurance at 2000 or 7000 And then a week later, the insurer says this price is not working for me, change it to, you know, 100 times hike. So that mismatch uh, is a problem. And I think, uh, you know, areas of, op of improvement could be maybe getting, I don't know how, how it can be fixed, but it's, it could be putting insurers, uh, getting them technical support to be able to underwrite products uh, for the micro market. And even if it, if it means testing, then again, it's, it maybe it could mean uh, getting telcos in the room to have the appetite to try products that don't necessarily bring uh, profit. So again, as you would know, the modality of, of telcos and the corporate world, you are measured by, through KPIs. So if you're, you're supposed to bring in X amount of money by quarter one, two, three, if this micro product is not bringing you the revenues, then you have no business uh, you know, supporting it. So the mismatch there uh, was the second problem. And um, the third would be uh, from the regulator side, uh, affordable licenses, like it, it was said earlier. So for us, with, with, with all the challenges that, that we keep facing with the insurer uh, having stable prices, the obvious um, decision, decision would be, let's get uh, a micro insurance license and be co in control of the pricing and the underwriting. But then we can't afford it. Again, we are a local uh, startup. Getting a license for that is, is almost impossible. It could be achievable, but it's, it's uh, not affordable for us. So that takes us back to, okay, need for capital, need for investors to get us to a level that we can get our own license. But the job would have been easier if insurers had the risk appetite to um, create products and try products, but maybe not so volatile in terms of changing prices as, as, as the market goes. And then um, awareness, again, I think it's also a major issue in the can't hear you Lillian hello when physical can you hear me now yes you you're breaking now go go on uh, okay, so educating the country about insurance before selling them a product is extremely expensive. So maybe a national campaign on, on um, awareness or financial literacy would help here so that when micro insurer, insurance companies come in play, all they have to do is just do sales and not educating the country. And yeah, the, the last would be, uh, yeah, how can the likes of F FSDT harmonize uh, uh, the risk appetite and uh, the, the the risk appetite for insurers, the need to try products, then then they need to uh, achieve revenues for for telcos or partners that are needed to 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 push uh, insurance um, forward. So yeah, I I think that would be it from me. Thank you, thank you for sharing with us, uh, Angelica. Karibu. Uh, Asante, uh, thank you, um, Madam Margaret. Um, 
So from from the AMNU side, I think Lillian has, has spoken a number of uh, items that are challenging to um, to um, to players. But just to highlight, I think I would want to start with the journey of um, where we've come from as an MNO, especially Tigo, in supporting insurance. So we did um, see the value of insurance earlier on in 2016 in partnership. Um, and MNOs cannot provide insurance because we are not uh, licensed to provide insurance, but we do this through partnerships. And early in 20, 2016, um, Tigo, we partnered with Milvic uh, to bring about um, microinsurance. At this point, we started with um, premiums being paid through airtime. It was a very complex product, but it, uh, um, it was the market needed it, and they actually um, took the product up and we pushed the product, but realized along the way it was better for us to do the product under our mobile financial services, and we did change um, the premium into um, Tigo Pesa. So MNOs, we have we cover quite a number of hats as far as insurance is concerned. Um, we are playing as innovators, we are playing as partners, we are playing as distribution channels, and so many other uh, different aspects of that. So um, in the quest to increase uh, insurance in the country, um, we are better to go than an MNO. So from the MNO perspective, we have. Uh, 80% of the population. So if we are able to leverage on the already existing uh, MNO infrastructure, then it becomes it becomes very simple. So this is how we built a, a product with Milvic, and uh, we, are, we are able to um, onboard quite a number of customers, and we've been enhancing our products as we move on with the understanding of what customer needs from time to time. So in this partnership, we have we've been providing health. I think at the beginning, um, we saw that health was what the market seems to need most. So we provided health and um, we are covering hospitalization, accident and life in terms of uh, um, the products. And we have over 100,000 subscriptions um, in terms of transactions on a, on a monthly basis. And this is at a level where there is no, um, or the communication, the sensitization hasn't been that massive, which I believe is what we need to do going forward uh, if we are going to reach um, the 50% of the population having um, products from insurance. So in terms of um, what can we do or what we are doing, so apart from actually providing these services in partnership, we are also supporting so many other insurance uh, companies in terms of uh, collection of premiums and disbursements. So they're using the mobile money platform, they're using Tigo Pesa in order to do collections for the premiums and also um, uh, in terms of uh, disbursement of claims. So this is also another opportunity that we are bringing to the to the insurance space um, as partners for insurance companies and, uh, and insurance brokers. Also, um, in terms of uh, distribution side, so we have already, we have a distribution across the country. Um, we are all over the country. We have presence in terms of our, our, our shops. We have presence in terms of our agents that we are partnering with. So this is already um, a distribution um, that companies can use through partnering uh, with MNOs in order to reach to um, different parts of the country's different kind of customers. And um, in terms of uh, what we do, communication is key to us. We have a lot of customers that we communicate to on a daily basis. So with this kind of partnership, we're able to bring um, to the insurance uh, companies this ability to reach their customer, ability to communicate to the customers. As, as highlighted, one of the key challenges is um, understanding. So insurance is still not well understood across uh, across the masses, and we need to spend a lot of time, we need to spend a lot of resource to communicate and educate um, different people about why insurance, how they can get the insurance, why they should get the insurance. So we come in um, as Tigo Pesa to give this opportunity because we we do this every day. We are talking to um, over 2 million customers on a daily basis. We, 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 we can and we are ready to support and partner in order to push um, to push um, uh, customers to understand and to be able to take up some of these solutions. Uh, we talked about access. So I think with partners, uh, working with different partners and with MNOs, we bring access across, across uh, different uh, customers. So we have the phones, we have um, the systems in place 
which can be leveraged uh, at a cheaper cost than having to create a whole new distribution um, in place. And also um, in terms of products, we, we have understood or in the past few years with mobile money, we've created um, a way to communicate to our customers and we've given our customers platforms that they're used to. So we, 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 how do we make the product seamless? How do we make the product easy? This is uh, the, the point where we come in as innovators uh, in partnership with uh, other companies in order to bring relevant solutions to, to the customers. Also, we as MNOs have quite massive data that we can leverage in order to understand better the kind of customers we want, uh, the kind of customers we have, what kind of products should we give them, what is relevant to them at this point in time. So uh, we're talking about insurance in agriculture. We know who uh, the customers who are doing agriculture are, where they are, how do we support that? So this is something that can be used to enhance um, the distribution. In terms of uh, challenges, um, I can highlight uh, quite a number of challenges, but mainly is the understanding. I think we, we can agree here, um, insurance is not easily understood across the masses. Uh, we don't really understand how, we don't really understand the benefits. So communication is, is very key, and I, I still believe there's a lot that can be done in order to communicate more, to educate more. Uh, and this is, this is something that no one can do on their own, so we need to work um, together because it's something that impacts the entire industry. So how does how do we come together, different players, different partners, to bring this understanding to the people? We have, um, I think my previous speakers uh, discussed about um, regulators. So from the MNO perspective, for us to do uh, an insurance or partner with an insurance service, we have to go through different gates of regulators. So key challenge is, these regulators harmonizing and being able to support the products to, at the same time all together. So that flexibility that um, regulators should have is, is very key for us to be able to take products to market um, easily and, and, and develop as many products as possible. So, and also the time they take to uh, approve some of these requests, it, it has to be um, short enough for us to be able to make the changes, to bring the products, to make people understand. So I think uh, regulation is, is, is one of the uh, key challenges that we face uh, in order to push and bring about um, uh, more usage as far as insurance is concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Angelica, for sharing with us what is happening at uh, Tigo and your experience, of course, in the microinsurance space and the journey which you embarked on. I have not seen any question in the, in the chat box. I've been looking there and I do not see any question. So um, I can allow, if there is any participants who want to ask a question by raise of your hand, I can, I'll see here and I'll, uh, or if you have a comment, this is a session now for our participants to put in their comment. I'm sure it is, the topic is uh, very interesting and very engaging. So you're welcome. I'll allow, uh, by raise of your hand. Please uh, proceed. Just yourself, your name and uh, where you're coming from. Not your region, but your organization. Don't tell us you are from Wanzana. Mzee Mama, did you allow me or is it someone else? Okay, go ahead, Anselm, go ahead. Don't tell me where you are coming from, Mosh. Just uh, ask your question yes. and organize. Now, first of all, I want to thank all the previous speakers for highlighting the key issues that uh, that we have in our market. Uh, I, I have just a small comment that um, our market is very right. If you 
look at all the indicators, including economic indicators, including the population growth rate, including the um, uh, declining in poverty ratio, you will realize that we have a market which is very ready for uh, mass market products or micro insurance products. But one thing that as a market we need to work together to change so that we can be able to exploit the opportunity is the perception that micro insurance is a cheap product, one, and two, that is, is product for poor people. You, you see, at a time when we use these definitions like um, uh, base of the population, right? Uh, so like the people who are at the lowest, uh, you know, in the, in the population pyramid, the, the BOP, we kind of fail to identify where the actual um, potential is. As a result, whatever it is, we bring into the market products which are very cheap, they fail to sustain themselves, and as, a, as, a, as such, the insurers um, uh, shy away as fast as they, they can afford. So if, if we kind of redefine this, this uh, market segment and redefine our approach, because as conventional insurance, we have only maybe covered, what, 4 or 6% of the population from the private insurance side. Why do we want to start at the base of the pyramid instead of starting here at the top of the, uh, the pyramid? You know, we have this from the... 6% we have covered, we have a lot until we get to the about 76 because our population, the people who are below poverty line is about 26% of the whole population. So I think we need to redefine the way we are approaching uh, the mass market. The potential is there and the opportunity is there. And I think the other thing is we, we have significant advantage of the youths who have come into the market whom if we work with, if we shape them, we'll have a sufficient force that they can bring impact, similar to what Dr. Sakware was mentioning that has happened in countries like Brazil, for example. So the market is ready. It is up to us, the players, to identify the winning points which are in place and work together as a team. Because the fact is, um, separately, individually, this will this journey will be very difficult and maybe not possible at some point. But if we join our efforts, our strategies, our means, our resources, then I think we'll be able to, to achieve the target. And the government is supporting us through the financial sector development master plan. Thank you, uh, Zemama. Thank you very much, Aslam. I have two questions. I will start with those and then we can. Uh take the one who raised them. One is for Lillian. Uh, Lillian, that space you occupy is exciting and interesting. Say a bit about any competition you face. Are these competitors, are there competitors? I'm eyeing the possibility of growth of microinsurance by there being uh, Yami. Lillian, did you hear that? Just take it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, so yes, there are competitors like yes, there are competitors like mentioned uh, by the regulator of other micro insurance entities uh, registered. But um, uh, again, this my answer would be also in the form of a question to Anselm and uh, Sakwari, where yes, we are saying the government is also um, in, in, in the micro insurance space and private entities as ourselves are also trying to do the same thing. If we move to, to the middle income population as, as a target customer, and you know, in, back, in the back of your mind, look at uh, uh, NHIF. How do you compete with the government in a sense? Or are we supposed to be competing or not competing? Do we complement each other? It's, it's the myth that, um, I have and uh, unsure if, again, for me, will my competitor be uh, NHIF or um, CHIF, or are we supposed to be complementing each other? But yeah, so that question is for, for, for the two, Anselm and Sakwari, because I know they have a vast experience in, in, in the area. 
And uh, for, for the person who asked the question, again, yes, we do have competitors. We kind of see uh, um, NHIF and CHIF as, as competition. And it's scary for us because, again, the fear of competing with uh, government, which is, is uh, most likely uh, receiving funds to uh, quote their products cheaper. Thank you, Lillian. Uh, before uh, Anselm and Sakwale respond, I would, uh, there is a question for Kemi. What is the way forward building on the challenge fund ex experience? Kemi, there is a question. Thank for you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, and thank you for the question. Um, I think there are many ways to look at this, and I'd like to start by saying that uh, driving um, inclusive insurance stroke uh, microinsurance is not a magic bullet, uh, and that's why even the initiatives that we had as part of the National Microinsurance Action Plan were actually a combination of different approaches to help arrive at, at means that address the constraints that exist in the market in terms of demand and supply. So back to the BIMA challenge experience, that was a demonstration uh, for the market to actually see that it is possible. It is possible to invest, to co-invest, because this was a shared uh, fund where the, the applicants were able to put 50% of their investment, and so was uh, FSCT able to do that. So demonstration that it is possible, it can be done. So what do we expect to happen next, and which is what we've already seen in terms of market facilitation, we've seen what we call replication. So when the demonstration has been done and the market sees that it is possible, it can be done. Um, and I was trying to, to reflect on, on some of the different uh, solutions we've seen since then. You know, there have been products like uh, Bima Chap Chap. Uh, there's also been other products that are just for women. There have been other aspects in terms of insurance premium finance that was not there. Uh, even banks offering Bima Goma. Bima, Bima Bomba, and also more recently we've seen innovations around agriculture insurance, uh, whereby voucher systems, which are innovative in their own way, being able to be solutions for farmers who are offering um, crop insurance, but also agriculture insurance. So the demonstration has been there and the market is now replication, replicating itself. And that's where we talk once again about maturity of the market. So moving forward, the different ways that this can turn um, for the market to continue, but also are there other players who are also willing to look at some sort of partnerships uh, to be able to drive? And this, this ties into what some of the other panelists have also been speaking about. So how can partnerships come into play? Because one person cannot do it alone. So they've seen that uh, distribution can be through uh, bank assurance, it could be through mobile platforms, it could be through agents, um, it could be through voucher systems. So how can that be done? So that's the next next possible stage. If other players are able to come in and offer other innovative uh, challenge funds that can come into play, that would be excellent. But the market has shown and continues to show um, that that is possible. And I'd like to add that um, this is tied in with data and insights and research. Uh, and this answers some of the challenges that the other panelists were speaking about regarding data insights research. There is the market microinsurance uh, landscape survey, uh, which actually provides direct insights. And this is a supply side from the market that talks about which products have come in, what is being offered, and how is it being addressed in terms of partners, in terms of minimum premiums, maximum premiums, number of uh, partners who have been reached. So that would be the, the next possible stage. Yes, so I hope that answers you. Um, and as market facilitators, that is what our role is, to get stir things up, get things going, and see the market responding as best as it can. And where we need to come in, and one thing I'll also add is that technical assistance cannot be enough because there are always different solutions and different challenges that come in. So how are insurers able to push that as a notch further to be able to address the issues that that, that come into play? Um, and uh, uh, Margaret, if you just allow me to touch, there was quite a bit mentioned about pricing by the other players. And to add that there is a specific um, program on pricing in terms of capacity building for microinsurance that addresses how should microinsurance products be priced. Because actual aspects come in, but microinsurance is a different way of actually looking at how to price a product because you need to look at how it's seamless, how it's convenient, 
and also keeping admin costs low, but also marketing costs at, to the point that you're able to reach this user and also educate them as, as best as you can to be able to, to reach that particular point. So once again, back to my initial point that it's a combination of different things if we're going to achieve the targets uh, that are required for us to do so 50% by 2028 stroke 30. Thank you. Thank you, Kemi. I'll, uh, I'm still on the chat. There is a question for Hilad. I would like to hear the regulator response on the advice uh, given by Dr. Sakwale towards uh, democratizing the selling of microinsurance, allowing masses to sell the product to the people. Uh, Sakwale, can, sorry, it's Hilad. Can you take that, please? Yes, madam. Yeah, thank you for the good question. Yeah, currently regulator have a restriction on uh, who is supposed to sell insurance. The minimum requirement is uh, having a COP certificate of proficiency. But uh, for the we, for the product which which is uh, pre underwritten, most of the uh, this uh, micro insurance products are pre underwritten products. Which uh, needs not uh, someone to no, no, need not uh, somebody to have a knowledge of insurance actually to sell it because uh, it's like um, when you want to, when, when you want maybe to buy a medical insurance you just go and uh, mention that you want to buy maybe gold limits will be there and all the underwriting uh, procedures have been taken care of by the underwriter so. Anybody can sell it. So for that purpose, I think it will be easy for MNOs, for any distribution channel, for face-based to embark into selling these uh, micro-insurance products. And also just to mention, we, uh, the other my colleagues, they have mentioned that about the, if somebody may be allowed to register separately, a micro insurance company. For the answer is yes. Our regulation 18, regulation 18, 18.1e, mention uh, how we can register a company transacting non life, non marine business. Then uh, for micro insurance product, if you want to register a micro insurance company, that uh, micro insurance pro uh, company can be registered under that uh, uh, regulation. Thank you. I think, Hilali, you, you need a separate uh, set of regulation for, for a micro-insurance uh, company. And I know the one you're referring to, but uh, I think you need to think about it. Just uh, take it as, uh, you know, a waking item from this meeting. I don't think that one can really capture if we are if we go by the uh, definition of microinsurance, yes, but if we are talking about the lower end income, I think uh, the, the regulatory authority need to look at what can be done. Uh, you don't you don't have to necessarily answer that, but I think it is a food for thought in that space okay, uh, what can be done. Yeah. So there is another okay. question in the chat. Uh, before I go to Dr. Sakwale and Anselm, there's a question from uh, From Sondore, do we have any insurance awareness strategies to reach the mass, specifically in the village? Is there any strategy? Uh, from who will take that from the panelists? Um, I can take that, Margaret. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for the question. There is, um, and that is, is twofold. Firstly, through the insurance sector directly, there is a national insurance education strategy, uh, which has been endorsed by the industry and it is led by the regulator, TIRA, alongside the National Insurance Education Committee. And one of the demonstrations within that uh, was to look at grassroots education uh, through uh, training of trainers, but also to look at how that is translated into an avenue for, for those who've been educated to be able to uptake insurance. And it's not a new model. This is similar to some of the work that has been done 
uh, by farm access in different areas, especially around uh, Moshi and Arusha area, uh, for the uptake for for improved uh, community health funds. Um, and that uh, pilot has been fairly successful. Um, it was in the Jombe area. I hope I have that right. Um, and and just been completed because the first phase of this project has been done, and it's it's a it's an initiative that was supported by FSDT. So the idea after that is uh, possibly to look at the second page, but also a replication of these efforts so that uh, once again, once it is running on its own, it becomes uh, sustainable and you look at a uh, business development partners model, similar to what you see for cooperatives, whereby there's someone who supports the, the circles uh, or the cooperative to set up and members to understand and then thereafter, uh, they provide the technical assistance and the group is able to support them uh, in terms of a fee for service accordingly. So that is one initiative. Um, and the other initiative uh, was the national one through the National um, Financial Education Framework, uh, which was 2016 to 2020, uh, which is coming to um, closing now, obviously now the evaluation. So there have been lots of learnings in terms of uh, what needs to be implemented and there's a tool that has been developed as well. Uh, which can be used and one of the areas in terms of financial services, of course, is insurance. So uh, once uh, and this is led as part of the national financial inclusion framework um, and once uh, they come to the point that they're ready and tied in with the work within the financial sector master plan, uh, there should be some some good efforts coming in. So you're seeing different uh, initiatives uh, looking at uh, reaching uh, customers in terms of awareness and education and would like to say that there's limited replication but the goal is to achieve and they're all working collectively um, to be able to make sure that the target is achieved so those are some of the the efforts uh, that are in place but also not to say that there's no one else doing anything you'd find that um, within different groups especially the circles and cooperatives they do have uh, a jami fund and within that they might be taking care of their their teams uh, their members and their families uh, through uh, health initiatives there, but also educating them accordingly. So, you know, there's efforts already in place. It could be non-traditional uh, or traditional, but there's a way to make sure that the populace is, is educated to understand the risk management component, which is what we are talking about here. And uh, insurance becomes one of the approaches that can be taken uh, to address risks. Thank you. Thank you, Kemi. And there's, I know that one of the functions of TIRA, which is actually in, in the act, in the law, which established TIRA, Tanzania Insurance Regulatory Authority, is market development. Mm -hmm. So it is actually by law, TIRA has yeah. a, a function of market development. And I think uh, you cannot develop a market unless the market is aware of uh, what you are doing or what you are to achieve. So I think. Uh, TIRA also, have the, in fact, they have a market development directorate. Yes. So they also have a strategy for actually creating awareness uh, of, of insurance. How, how far we reach the village, that is another discussion. So uh, Anselm and uh, Sakwale, one of you, can you quickly respond to what Lillian said? If you still remember, I'll, I'll ask Lillian to repeat. No, no I do remember. Okay, Sakwari, go ahead. Just uh, Lillian was of opinion that um, uh, how can uh, a private firm compete with um, a national health insurance fund, for example, in the provision of insurance services to the masses? Uh, there, are, there are two things in that uh, preposition. One, I don't see any competition because I see that they complement. Because, uh, Lillian, you can agree with me that uh, most of our, most of the government would want to service the people. And health is part of, of that uh, social service under the constitution. So they have the role, the role to play. Now, uh, when it comes to insurance, there is one thing which a private firm can do, which we have to, which with our community also value, the power of customer safety. We in the private sector, 
we can service better our clients than any government institution. And the reality we get out of that is the is the is the value which we are giving to our society. So I think any company, any micro insurance firm, it can differentiate its product and get the loyalty to the very poor or the mid middle class society in any case, in any product for sure. So if the insurance, national health insurance has gone far to the village, uh, it gives you a room as a private firm that the awareness is already there. Then you put your product uh, uh, to sell to an, a, a Nike or a certain segment of the of the population which will be loyal to your to, uh, to, which will require your product and loyal to your customer service. So I don't see any 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 competition to so to speak. Thank you for that comment. Uh, any other question from the audience? Okay, I will uh, allow our panelists, after the, having heard from the others, and uh, you know if they can uh, tell us in five minutes what they think is the way forward. I know Anselm may say the market is ready. What are the lessons learned? Are we getting, uh, will we be able to achieve the targets? Just briefly from your own uh, per perception, after having hearing the 10 years journey, and now we start another 10 years journey. So I'll start in the same order. I'll start with uh, Joy, just briefly. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you, Margaret. Um, if it were possible, um, could I possibly go last because then I can also be able to consolidate uh, inputs and okay. quickly respond as well. Thank okay, you. fine. You'll be the last. Okay. So, Hamis? Hamis? Thanks. The Mama Ikongo, I'm quite sure we will be able to. Meet the target of 50% uh, of uh, adult persons at least having uh, one class of uh, insurance. I can see the effort from the insurance carriers, especially from the life insurance side. And uh, I am quite sure if uh, regulator allow a hybrid product on a micro insurance space that will definitely increase the number of uh, participants as we have said before we need a bit of a uh, relaxation on the regulation relaxation on uh, who can sell uh, the product, fast tracking of the product when they go to regulator for approval, and uh, clear regulation on uh, registration of uh, micro insurance service provider. So if we, uh, and I said relief in terms of uh, uh, taxation, uh, maybe whether you are selling a hybrid or uh, an unlife uh, uh, product, micro insurance product, uh, should be uh, free of, uh, of that to make it uh, affordable to the uh, public and I don't mind if uh, there's a regulation to insure us to uh, have a certain portion of their GWP as uh, a micro insurance product so that 
they can uh, simulate it becomes a compulsory for each one to come up uh, with an innovative idea of having uh, some form of uh, uh, micro insurance product. It's only through a micro insurance product sales uh, where we can uh, impact the public. That is my take. Thank you. Uh, Lillian? Uh, so mine would, would still be on pricing. I'm aware Kemi Barrow says there are efforts already done there. But yeah, to, so maybe just um, an emphasis there so that insurers are well prepared and have the skills and abilities to underwrite products that are profitable to them in some way, but also attractive to, to the market. Because one of the major discussion we had was, yes, the underwriter would give you a price that works for them. But in, if you, you if you try to put that you know product or give that product to the customer, it's not attractive. You know the likes of saying I'm willing to cover more inpatient than outpatient, while the customer wants outpatient than inpatient. Again, uh, emphasizes more on on the mismatch between supply side and and demand side. So just more effort there. But in SureTech, there are solutions out there ready and, and willing to to collaborate. I'm seeing telcos being very excited to collaborate, but I think major effort needs to be put on the uh, insurer's side. Yeah. Thank you, Angelica. Um, thank you, Mzema Maikonga. Um, I'm seeing a question. I, it's addressed to me, but I think it was sent as a direct, maybe it was direct, so you, uh, you did not see it. I'll read it out, reply to it, then uh, do my closing remarks. So it's saying, it is true that communication is key in raising awareness about microinsurance. Has Tigo made any plans to use mobile money agents, wakalas as a source of information, or ambassadors? as well for insurance, especially for those living deep in the rural areas. So um, as I highlighted before, as Tigo, we are, are ready to partner. We, we, we are looking forward to supporting insurance. And we do, uh, in partnership with Milvic, um, do a lot of communication through our, all our communication channels, that is uh, through our call centers. We, we, we communicate and um, give information to customers as far as insurance is concerned on a product level. We do uh, our shops, we use our shops as areas where our customers can come and inquire and they also get information about insurance. We also uh, use our sales channels to uh, take the uh, information about insurance product-wise to the market. We also are doing a lot of campaigns in terms of social media, in terms of TV, radios, uh, to promote our insurance product. But on the Wakalas, uh, specifically on Wakalas, this is where the regulations come in. As I highlighted before, we have uh, three regulators for us to be able to bring such a product into market. And uh, Wakalas are specifically regulated uh, to do a certain things. So they are not, um, at this point, they cannot do, so we cannot do so much with them to push insurance. So this is where we, we need to put efforts, uh, work with our regulators, to use this existing channel in order to um, to reach more people. So I think I would like to um, take this as an action, give this as an action to our regulators and also uh, to FSDT, how do we bring this channel to be used within their allowable regulations? Because now um, they have specific um, regulations that um, determine what they can do. And, one, and so at that point, we can't use them for this, but it is, a, a very good channel because we have our colors over 120 across the country. If we're able to leverage and do this, then it should be um, very, very easy to reach more people. And again, in terms of communication, we as Tigo are doing so much, but until we have harmonized industry efforts, it will be very tough to reach um, more people. So we need to do that. This is uh, the question. I think uh, whoever asked it, I think it's clear. In terms of um, our closing remarks from my side, um, we as a you know, especially Tigo, we are ready to partner. We, we believe and we understand the uh, importance of partnerships. We have partnered in insurance already and we are ready to partner. We have um, a number of products, a number of thoughts that we can work with the right partners to push to the market in order to increase penetration of insurance. And also, uh, one key thing I urge, I urge the insurance companies is to have relevant products 
products that are able to mimic the lives of the customers. So we talked about data. We need to segment and know what kind of insurance to give which segment of customers. So this is very key for us to be able to cover uh, more ground and to give customers the products that they really need uh, for them to uptake. Uh, communication, again, communication is very key, but again, this communication is also bringing transparency. So customers need to understand what exactly we are talking about. So in terms of insurance products, we need to give them um, under promise and over deliver as opposed to uh, the norm that we say we don't give them all the right information and they uptake and at the end of the time when it comes to uh, claims, then they have confusion. There's a lot of um, miscommunication. And the last one um, is innovation. We need to innovate. Um, consumer requirements are changing every day. What are we doing to innovate in order to give them uh, the, what they need at that particular time? And uh, finally, uh, we need insurance companies, insurance brokers to leverage on the existing um, infrastructure that already is existing. And we as Tigo have distribution. We have uh, already the existing ecosystem that can be used. So instead of reinventing the wheel, partner with us and let's push insurance together to the market. Thank you. Thank you, Angelica. Dr. Sakwale. Uh, thank you, Madam Mze Kikongo. Uh, as a way forward, uh, I will reiterate re that um, given that uh, Tigo border already in a play and uh, micro insurance is all about numbers, I am convinced that with the minimum relaxation on who will sell insurance with which requirement uh, and with in, in, in which form then we will have the masses in place for example if we allow all what colors border and for that case all what colors of banks uh, to be the agents of be allowed to sell insurance with a very minimum uh, requirement from the regulatory point of view, or if we allow all our students from COP to degree to be in a direct sell arrangement, we will have a maximum number of people in the in the market going to our large population of 60 million people talking about insurance, but also pushing the product to the people and that will have two advantages. One is awareness, but also a mass which is very critical to our insurers. The second, uh, Madam Chair, as a way forward is, 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 is investment. Uh, I am very uh, uh, happy that Goda uh, and Chigo are talking about partnership investment in knowledge i will therefore my, one of my take home today is that i i will uh, i will uh, connect with angelina and uh, lillian to see how we can uh, work together in, in the space of uh, product development and knowledge gap which we which we all see in this this market last but not least uh, madam chair is is is, is, is we need a um, uh, um, a collaborative effort in terms of awareness. Every time when it comes to who will do the awareness, uh, Association of Tanzania Insurers will say this is a, a something to something for the for the regulator. A regulator will say the budget won't pay, and a normal insurance company will say if I do this. Uh, I will be I will be benefiting the entire market and uh, you see there are a lot of issues. I think we need a framework where somebody pays a neutral a neutral we need a fund uh, which uh, which a neutral independent uh, institution provide education for insurance in a certain format and agreement and we we are ready as an African college to offer that uh, space. And that will allow 
all these uh, who will do what and what will be the role of who to be so that framework is is important that we we start arranging that kind of framework and for this i will ask fsdt to to engineer or to lead us in, in doing in, in doing a, a framework of how uh, a national insurance education framework can be undertaken by a neutral institution with a certain uh, uh, compensations from from various various stakeholders. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and I'm very glad for your invitation to this very important uh, meeting and meeting a very important people like uh, very 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 well informed panelists as you can see thank you very much it is my hand. thank you thank you uh, Anselm, there's a question you will take first before you put your this is from irene uh it was about circles where is it now okay what strategy do you do you use to reach circles in remote areas i'm very much interested in this group because it is our area of concentration as an umbrella organization of circles. Uh, I, I see there is a response from this, uh, Hamis that Sunlam has specific products for circles and Vicoba. But uh, I want uh, first uh, how, Aslam, can you respond? How do we reach them? What is the strategy? Yes, so um, they have. I could say two or three strategies that can be used. One is um, working with um, umbrella organizations. Second is working with um, um, uh, TASA. As a ministry, they, they work with all these kind of groups. The third approach is through the Ministry of Finance. They are coordinating all these uh, um, CMGs, community microfinance groups, including the circles, the MFIs. They are well disaggregated and they are well connected. And another um, approach is like the Vicobas, they have umbrella association, the likes of FETA, for example, the likes of TAM, uh, TAMFI. So this could be the, the easiest route toward these institutions. And they are coordinated at district level. In each district, uh, there is um, an official who deals with um, uh, socioeconomic groups of that particular district. I think also at the region level, there, is, there will be such an official. So if, if a person wants to access this segment, then those four or five options, he could take either of that route and he will get uh, a very efficient way of organizing and, and, and working with them. The good thing is they are very proactive and they are they are already working in the finance space, so the language will be very easy to be understood if you go with a value that is, um, uh, I would say, it makes sense to them. Thank you. Thank you. Can you now put in your closing remarks? Especially in your position as the coordinator for microinsurance. Uh, thank you, Mahem Zemama. This is a, a special a privilege. Eh? The good thing of having a ma your mother coordinating the meeting, you always get a pri privilege. Uh, now, um, at the technical working group for microinsurance, we have two products for the players which can help them significantly to progress in the space of uh, inclusive insurance. One, uh, Kemibaro mentioned about the microinsurance landscape survey. This segment, we need a lot of insight to understand it so that we can address the opportunity that is there. When you look at the numbers, you will, re you will be surprised yourself as to how fast the opportunity is. Lillian, for example, uh, talked about um, the NHIF and CHF challenge, the, the, the government. I mean, there is no way that CHF and NHIF can work on themselves. And there are a lot of examples across the world how the public and the private work together to provide health insurance. It is very complex, it's very fast. That is one. Two, we have the National um, Inclusive Insurance Strategy 
which has a team of experts work to put strategies for the market for the coming 10 years, how we can engage each economic segment using which strategies, uh, products, etc., so that we can get to the 50% population coverage in the next uh, 10 years. Now, we have the challenge, we as insurance players, we have given a challenge by the Ministry of Finance that in the span of 10 years, one, we are supposed to insure 50% of the population from the current, say, about 15 or 6 percent. But two, we have to increase our GDP penetration ratio from the current 0.5 percent to a 5 percent. That will translate to a premium of from what about 300 million US dollars premium to about 6.9 billion US dollars in premiums. You can imagine how many billionaires and millionaires will have in insurance industry if we take this opportunity of given by the ministry seriously and give solutions to the people. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Aslam. Uh, Dinad, just your closing remarks. Just a few few minutes. Dinad. Thank you, madam. Uh, on my side, what I see is that uh, is a collaboration between uh, insurers, MNOs, and uh, all uh, to make sure that uh, they, 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 they develop uh, demand-driven products and use uh, the opportunity, which is, uh, is already a no to MNOs, because the MNOs, they have, they do, uh, have, they have already ready-made uh, customers. And the good way to to reach them uh, without going against uh, regulations is, is, is to is to uh, to, bring, to innovate uh, uh, pre underwritten uh, products so that at least those products will be easy for them to be sold through those uh, wakala like bank wakala and the mpesa wakala then uh, through innovation and collaboration i think it will be easier for the insurance industry to grow to the level of having 50 percent by 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Kemi. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. I appreciate it. There's so much uh, that has been covered, which is so useful when we talk about 10 years and different solutions. So I think Anselm, you were taking you were taking note of everything because it all ties in with the with the ultimate action plan for the financial sector deepening. Uh, financial sector development master plan. Um, so I'll, I'll go back to 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 the heart of it uh, and say that um, it's important to remember the customer always. We've been talking quite a bit about the supply side, uh, talked about financial literacy, but uh, the customer is really at the heart of it, and and also that's one of the reasons why we do what we do at at FSDT. Um, so with that said, we're talking about driving growth in terms of contribution to GDP. Um, also in terms of number of solutions in the market, um, regulations being being eased to make it easier to, to do business in, in this space. Um, but back to the customer, there's a need for, for clear financial uh, consumer protection in place. And what does that mean? It means it's based on three pillars. Uh, the literacy piece, which we've all been talking about. So the customer needs to be aware and, and uh, confident about which products are there and also how to make decisions on what to take. So it also ties in, Lillian, with the question you were saying about complementing or competing or, or co-competing. Um, there's always space for different players in the market because you're offering something different to different customers uh, based on the segment and based on their needs. So you'll have to coexist and I think do, and everyone is going to do well. It's, it's an outlook of abundance in terms of what is possible because we only have, you know, 15%. What's out there is huge. Um, also, there's the aspect of market conduct. So the regulator coming in and how is the flexibility? And in Hillard, in terms of test and learn approaches, we've seen some of that happening in terms of no objections, in terms of some of the products going out there, but maybe there needs to be more you know, easier product approvals coming through. And then in terms of regulation, of course, once the national insurance policy is is, is enacted, it will really open up so many avenues that maybe were once were currently closed in 
terms of how distribution can be done and open up even aspects like direct sales force coming through as well. Um, and also customer redress. Um, you know, what does a customer do when things go wrong? You take a product from a mobile space um, and you have an insurance regulator, you have uh, the communications TCRA regulator, speaking about the Tanzania space, and you have the, the Bank of Tanzania. You also have the uh, fiduciary um, unit also FIU involved. So at what point and when can the customer or where do they actually go and complain and how do they receive their redress when things go wrong? And this is, I'm sure, personal experience from each one of you. If you're using mobile banking products, if you've taken mobile insurance, you might have had an incident. So how was it addressed? So being able to make these aspects very clear in a very simple way um, to the customer to be able to know that they're taking a product with confidence and of course insurance we know that we're selling something that is not tangible we continue to sell a promise to the customer so how are we sure that what they're getting is what they actually wanted and when things go wrong which they can that they're able to get exactly what they need um so chair I'll also touch on the market um some of the nuggets i think the other important thing besides the the customer and the and the protection in terms of consumer financial consumer protection. Um, there's also the aspect of the business case. If the board of directors of an organization, regardless of which organization, be it an insurance company, be it an MNO, uh, be it a brokerage, be it a, a FinTech or InsureTech, whoever is in that value chain for a solution being distributed, they all have to buy in and be ready uh, to take on this business venture but with a knowing of what is expected. And we talk about markets that have done, well, we've spoken a lot about Brazil. Uh, they've used infrastructure, including their power, public power system, like our Tanesco, to be able to distribute uh, insurance to their market. But you also talk about Philippines, which have had good success stories. They face even bigger risks than we do. It's an area that's prone to floods, but they're able to still insure against such incidences and be able to pay claims on time and keep customers happy and keep on growing their customer base. So the business case is key as well. Um, and, and, you know, also capturing everything that has happened in terms of, of lessons learned. Um, and a lot of that, I would encourage you to also um, have a, a, a read through the BIMA challenge uh, focus note, which really covers quite a bit and shares experiences and learnings um, that, that is quite key. And also the video that we've put out there. So how do we move forward uh, in terms of what has been done? Obviously, it's, it's time. It's, it's been a reflection of, of what happened previously, and that we call part of our monitoring and learning. Uh, what have been able to gather? What are the lessons? And when we're advising or the market is ready to move on? Um, and some of the, the key nuggets, um, I would say definitely data drives insights, and there's information available which needs to be used. Uh, the microinsurance landscape, but there's also um, a, a, an initiative that FST had previously, FinSites Labs, which was helping um, organizations to go a bit deeper into, into their research. Um, the other thing <coughs> is the, the need to really look at, at, at solutions that are human-centered, uh, that touch on touch on, 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 on what the needs of the various uh, segments segments are. Um, so in, in summary, as I, as I put yeah. that together and pick up everything that has been directed, um, I would say it's just a need to have the right environment, uh, willing market players who understand and uh, demand side that has been informed and is confident in terms of the solutions when things go right and when there's a redress mechanism that needs to be touched on and addressed, but also for the market to keep on growing and sustaining itself, which is what we're doing. So products and customers being able to, to grow and, and the business case, you know, at the end of the day, where's the profitability for these organizations? Um, and I like what Hamis said, do we look at models like India, uh, whereby a percentage of your gross uh, written premium goes towards inclusive insurance. Um, so yeah, those are avenues. But all in all, if the action plan for the national insurance strategy and also the insurance action plan for the financial sector deepening master plan are able to come together, we'll be able to achieve. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Chair. So, I've been able to uh, summarize. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to, start to thank everybody who has participated in this uh, a very good reflection of the journey 
And uh, we are not saying that, uh, the good thing is that we are not saying that uh, we cannot go forward. We are all saying that uh, we have learned, we have gone through the journey, and we can do better. If we collaborate, if we improve what we are doing. So thank you very much uh, for everybody participated. I just wanted to, uh, Kemi, you want to say something? Uh, yes, uh, yes, please, uh, Margaret. Um, just to to request, if possible, maybe the conversation doesn't end here. Um, I don't know if we should maybe put our contacts in the chat box. So if anyone wants to reach out to anyone uh, within the group, the question, the, or it can be directed to FSDT, and we can redirect accordingly. Uh, perhaps that would be something uh, to add. And and just to clarify that it was the microinsurance uh, journey. Um, I forgot to say the name earlier in terms of the recording that was there. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much. So uh, I, I, I read a couple of books and in one of them, the author had a topic which said that uh, whoever owns the data owns the future. And uh, recently the minister, I think the new minister of information and communication technology, uh, when delivering their budget, they said that uh, they want to achieve 80%, 80, 80% internet users by the year 2025, from the current 43%. And I think I read somewhere else, uh, a company called themselves Afro Chambers, they were talking about Tanzania, and they are saying 63% of the population is under 25. Of course, this will be confirmed next year when we have our national but 63% of the population is under 25, and 23.1 million use internet. 5.2 million are on Facebook. So you can see, we, as uh, I think Anselm said, the, the, the opportunity is huge to make uh, billionaires, the let um, our president used to say, make billionaires. There's a lot of opportunity to make billionaires from the insurance space if we cooperate and address the issues we know, by the way. We have all mentioned them. So I'm sure through FSDT, they'll be coordinated. And uh, God willing, if I'm around 2028, it will be a different uh, story. Maybe we'll even uh, surpass what the government is saying. The last point, I'm just thinking on top of the box. Can we have a one-stop uh, financial inclusion regulatory, regulatory authority? Financial inclusion, because the, the hassles are quite heavy when you deal with four or five regulators. I don't know who will take this, but I'm just thinking on top of the box. Uh, I think uh, I was the one to give the closing. Irene, are you still in the room? Yes, please. Say I, am he I am here, uh, Madam Nze Ikongo. Uh, really, really great uh, uh, engagement and uh, participation. We have reflected. We have appreciated the growth and progress that has happened. Um, we have understood some of the key success factors that have actually led to the progress that we've seen and most importantly, what needs to be applied forward. And I understood the challenges and room for improvement. And I really, really like this public-private dialogue uh, with lots of actions, honestly, and a lot of engagement. And I could see some of the chat going on in terms of the connection that will take place after this. So I'm, I'm, I'm truly, truly humbled and very happy for this active participation. Great uh, panelists. Thank you, Madam Nze Ikongo, for your great uh, coordination and facilitation. Thank you, Kemibaro. Thank you, Lillian, Angelica, Dr. Sakware, um, uh, Hill, uh, Mr. Maschini from uh, Tira, as well as um, Hamis uh, from Sanlam. This has been really great, and we look forward for more. And I actually like your thinking without the box. It's not even on top of the box, but that's definitely the way forward because this market is so intertwined. I mean, look at Tigo today. I mean, I was in Telco, I mean, 15 years ago, we were only selling airtime. But look where they are today. And that's that's even 
but there is more to come. So that's definitely, I mean, I think we should do more of this discussion. Thanks everyone. Thank you all the audience and the active participation. Have a great afternoon. Asante Nisana. Thank you. By the way, I insisted in the industry, they call me Mze, because when they refer to older men, they say Mze Kong. So I said, from now on, <laughs> address me as Mze Mama Kong. So that, that's, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah. And actually, by the way, let me, there's one, there's, I actually was enjoying my screen and I'm seeing four well experienced seasoned ladies out there. That has been also a pleasure in, in this, in this webinar. Uh, and yeah. I have to mention that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, Asante Sana, everybody, take care. Yeah. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Asante. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good.